Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to talk about absolute referencing and mixed references. So on the screen, I've got a couple of examples that I will go through from the beginning. So in the green area, you can see I've got a markup column, which is adding 10% onto the sales figures. In the orange column, I've got a running total, which is basically adding up each month as I go down until you get the total at the bottom and you can see the overall total is equal to that one. On this mix sheet, I have a set of figures in the yellow and a set of figures in the orange. I want one to multiply the other and I can, you can see that it's done that. So there 10 times 10 is 100. We've also got conditional formatting colouring up colours here if one is equal to another. And I'll show you how to do that. So let me just get rid of all of these figures. We'll do that from scratch, get rid of them. Come back onto this one. I'll leave the sales figures there and get rid of everything else. So first of all, I want to add 10% or put 10% on that. I've got the 10% cell over here. I'll pull that green so it's just, you see where I'm getting it from. Now, I don't want to add it on, actually. I just want to show what 10% is of that. Now, this is a formula, equals, Click on that cell and I'm going times and then I'm clicking on this cell, which is great. Now, when I click the tick on that one, I will get the correct answer. The issue I'm going to have is if I just go to pull that down, I'm going to get blank cells because this cell is looking at H2. H2 is blank and that is looking at H3 and that is looking at H4. So as I've pulled it down, it's just pulling this down. Now, that is what's called a relative reference where it's just following the sequence down. What I need to do is to lock this cell or to make it absolute. And that's the technical term to make it absolute. A lot of people just say lock or fix the cell. Now, to do that, you, you need to use dollar signs. You can type the dollar signs. So I need to lock in this example that cell, which is H1. And it's up there. So I'm clicking onto the formula bar. And I'm going to press the F4 function key, which will put dollar signs either side of that cell reference. So one dollar sign in front of the H, which locks column H, and one in front of the number, which locks the row. And if I keep pressing F4, watch what happens. He's now taken the H off, and it's just got the dollar sign in front of the number, which is actually what I want, really, to lock that. And then F4 again, it'll swap the other one round. So now it's locking H, but not the number. And if I press it again, it's taking it off altogether dollar signs on for now let's just tick the tick see what happens if i pull this down i get it working correctly it's working correctly it's doing that now if i just delete these ones off and let's see what happens if i take one of the dollar signs off so if i press f4 so that's taken the h off the dollar signs not on the h if i tick that one so it's just on the number pull that one down it still works because it's locking row one and it's still looking at the, that 10%. Now let's see what happens if I press the F4 button again. So this time it's going to flick it over. So I've locked H, but not the number. Let's have a look. Pull that down. And we're back to getting not the correct answer. So if in doubt, put them both on. But in this example, I actually only needed to lock the, the number one. Let me just put this back on. So I'll go back up there, F4, F4, both back on, if in doubt, remember. And then I'll pull that down and you'll get the right answer. Now I need to add these two up. I'm going to use the key command to add those two together, which is Alt equals for the sum function. I'm going to tick that and pull it down, double click it down. Now, if this was formatted as a table, that would just fill it down. Now, the running total, I want to just use one dollar sign. You'll see how this works. If I do Alt equals again, it's coming up with just that one cell, E2, but I need it to be locked, F4 in it, doing a colon and putting E2 again. Now, the second E2, um, I don't want to be locked. So I've overwritten that one, haven't I? E2. So it should say E2, F4 and then colon E2. So the first E2 is locked. And again, it's only the number really I need to lock, but that, that'll do. If I tick that okay, 
it comes up with the answer it's added that added them together or it's looking at that one now if i pull it down one cell that should have added these two together so if i highlight these two you can see the number down the bottom there it's the same as this so what's happening is e2 is locked but now it's going to e3 it's sort of like an expanding list if i pull it down one more that's coming down to e4 so e2 to e4 and that is giving me that figure and then if i pull it all the way down that's the running total if you like and if i just do alt equals on this one and then tick that you'll see the number being exactly the same so there's a couple of examples of why you need to know about dollar signs first of all and how to use them with the f4 key but don't forget you can actually physically type them in if you want but it has to be a dollar sign now this mixed reference is i want to uh, multiply that and that and then that and that and so on and so on so this sum is simple it's equals that times c1 it's hiding from me so i'll tick that one one times one is one and if i pull that over this one is coming up c2 times d1 so d1 is right but c2 is not right because it's that even though the um, one times two is two that's not correct the way it's sitting there it's looking at the wrong place and if i keep pulling it across it's going to look similar now that's going wrong look so that should be one times three and it's not right so we need to lock something here so what i need to lock let's have a look go back to the first one i want it to um I need to lock the B, so let's go for B, dollar sign. I'm typing it, dollar sign, and I need to lock the one, C1. So it wants to go across to D, so I need that to move, and I want this to come down to two, three, four, five. So the B is locked, the C is not locked, but the number needs to be locked. So I'll do F, not F4, I'll just do the dollar sign, type it in there. So that's the difference there. This is called a mixed reference. So the column B is locked, so I can pull this down. And the number is locked on this one. So if I tick this, what should happen is if I go all the way across, that should work that out. And then if I come all the way down, it should work that out. And you get the 100 at the end there. Now I've got conditional formatting on this one, which I'll just do again. So if I go into conditional formatting, manage rules, just delete that for a minute. And then, uh, OK. So what, what you've done there is I've got two times three is six, et cetera, et cetera. So I want this to flag up, and this is the formula I'm going to do in conditional format, and that was the first formula there. So if I just highlight this area, go back into conditional format in manage rules, new rule, and the one I want is going to be the formula option, and then you are clicking on this cell, C2. So if C2, now I need the dollar sign off the number so I'm pressing F4 twice that'll take the dollar sign off the C off the number should I say so it's on the C the dollar signs on the C equals and then I'm clicking on C1 and on C1 I want the dollar sign off the C but on the number so I'm pressing F4 once I've got it there so that one's right so it's got c dollar sign one that's got dollar sign c2 now let's see what happens here let's do a color format for amber okay 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 and then it colors it up so one one is one two twos are four three threes a nine etc etc it's just highlighting all that up there so if you want to know your times table that's quite useful to do so basically this is just a little video of how you work the dollar signs make cells absolute make them mix so it's not a complete locked cell part of it is either the columns locked or the rows locked whichever way you want to do it but it speeds up data entry you don't want to be typing out formulas over and over again so hopefully that little video is of use thank you for your time i'll catch you in the next one